What's up guys? This video is a guide on how to draw flat sketches or technical sketches on Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna show you these seven simple and basic shapes. So let's begin. Now here's the thing. Every flat sketch is created in the exact same way. But the secret is, you first need a template that looks like this. Create it once, it takes like 10 minutes, and you can literally use it for the rest of your fashion design career to draw any garment from scratch. So what exactly is this? It's a drawing of a woman's body form. Now it's not a 9 or a 10 head figure guys. She is just an average height figure because our flat sketches need to represent the average woman. But how do we use this Christina? Well you slap it onto a sheet in Adobe Illustrator and just draw the garment you want over it. So yeah, let's start with creating this template. And today, in part one of this video, we are also going to use this template to draw a basic dress, a basic shirt, and a basic hoodie. So let's get started. So on Adobe Illustrator, I'm clicking New File, then going to Print, View All Presets, choosing A3, and hitting Create. I'm also going to save the file, naming it Body Form. The first thing I'm going to do is choose my pen tool, shortcut P on your keyboard and draw a straight line like this at the very top. I'm then going to copy and paste this line 10 times over the existing line itself. How do we do that? Highlight the line, press command C on your keyboard, followed by command shift V. This will place a copy exactly over the original, except 10 times, right? So hit command shift V, 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 10 times. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Then I'm going to select one of the lines, drag it down to the very bottom, like so, while holding down shift so that it moves in a perfectly straight line downwards. Then I'm going to highlight all the lines, come up here to the distribute panel, and click on vertical distribute center. This will separate out each line that you drew from top to bottom, ensuring equal spacing between all of them. Now highlight everything and group them together by hitting Command G on your keyboard. You now have your main guidelines ready. I'm then selecting my Type tool so that I can number my lines. I'm starting with 0 at the very top and just like we created the 10 lines, I am copying and pasting my 0. 10 times. So command C and command shift V, hitting the V 10 times. And again, bring just one of the zeros down to the last line. Then highlight all the zeros and use the align tool to separate all the zeros into equal spacing. Now go ahead and rename each of these lines from 0 to 10. And these are your basic guidelines, guys. But we also need secondary guidelines to help us create the body form properly. For this, I'm going to select this group of lines, create a copy with Command C and Command Shift V, and roughly move the copy down halfway like this. I'm also going to my stroke panel and ticking dashed line so that we end up with our secondary guidelines looking like this. Next, I want you to select the Type tool and start naming the lines in exactly this manner. This is so that when we start drawing, we know exactly where each body part needs to fall. Once that is done, add one final vertical line from top to bottom, holding down Shift to get a perfectly straight line. Now lock everything that you drew by hitting Command A on your keyboard, which will select everything on your page. Then hit Command 2, which is the shortcut to lock everything in place. Now locking things is always cool because then you can easily draw over them without your pen tool accidentally connecting to any random line that you drew hours ago. You can always undo the lock by hitting Option Command 2. So let's start drawing our body form with the pen tool. I'm beginning at line number 1, drawing only the right half throughout. Curve your lines inward at the waist and bring it back out towards the hip and down towards the ankles. When the right half is done, make a copy by hitting Command C, Command Shift V. The copy will appear right over the original. Then right click it, go to Transform, Reflect. Make sure Vertical is selected and hit OK and move the copy to the left side. I'm going to select both halves and simply hit D 
on my keyboard. Hitting D is an Adobe Illustrator shortcut that will give any shape a white fill and a black outline. Once that is done, go to Pathfinder and click Unite to merge both halves into one shape. Now let's get to her arms. I'm starting at the shoulder tip and coming till a little higher than crotch level and copy, paste and reflect like I have shown you to the other side. Now you can stop here or you can draw a few more details and guidelines that could possibly help you with drawing complex shapes. I'm clicking on my ellipse tool to draw the body form details at the neck, the wrists and the ankles. And after, I'm redrawing the center front line along with lines that define the neck, the elbows, the waist, the hip and the bust. As a finishing touch, I'm going to select just the main body parts and increase the stroke width to 0.031 inches. Then group the whole body form together by hitting Command G. And that's all guys, you are done with the body form. Step two is to draw whatever shape you want on this because now you will get the proportions of anything you draw perfectly correct. Let's start with garment number one, which is a basic dress. I'm going to create a new artboard by coming to my artboard panel on the right here. Click the plus icon and one more artboard will appear like this. Then copy paste just your body form onto the new sheet. I'm starting to draw my dress with the pen tool, which now has a gray color fill, just to distinguish it from the body form. I'm drawing the right half of my dress. It has a round neck and ends at mid thigh level. It also has short sleeves. Then copy, paste and reflect using the shortcuts that I taught you over to the left side. Then select the left half and the right half of the body only Go to Pathfinder and Unite. You now have the basic outline of your dress ready. I'm going to my artboard panel on the right, creating one more artboard sheet, then bringing my dress onto my new sheet so that I can work on it in even more detail. The first thing that I'm going to do is to select the entire dress and simply press D on my keyboard. Now again, on hitting D, any shape will automatically be given a white fill and a black outline. My next step is to start drawing my stitch lines. Let's start at the sleeve. Now the sleeve needs a double needle stitch at the hem, which basically is two rows of stitch lines. For this, I'm selecting my direct selection tool and instead of drawing the line from scratch at the sleeve hem, I'm simply highlighting the bottom line that I drew for my sleeve. Then copy and pasting it with Command C and Command Shift V. The direct selection tool will allow you to copy just that one line and not the whole shape. Now a copy has been made over the original. So with my arrow keys, I'm moving the copy upward. In this way, I do not need to draw a line from scratch and I don't need to struggle to get the exact angle that it is tilted at. I can simply copy the line that I already drew. Next, I'm going to my stroke panel, selecting dash line with a setting of 0.025 for the dash and 0.015 for the gap. The stitch line is now ready. But like I said, this dress is gonna have a double needle stitch at the sleeve hem. So I am making one more copy of the line and placing it like so. Then using my regular selection tool, I'm highlighting both lines, creating a copy and reflecting it to the right sleeve. Next, let's do the double needle stitch line at the hem in the same way. Take your direct selection tool and highlight the line that you have already created at the hem. Now, unlike the sleeve hem, this hem is curved and you can see that it has an anchor point at the center. So when you try to replicate lines like this one, make sure that with your direct selection tool, you highlight all the anchor points on the line so that your copy also appears with the same curve and anchor points. Let's hit Command C and Command Shift V. Use the arrow key to move upwards. And again, you can just go to the stroke panel and click on dashed line. But here's a very simple trick instead, guys. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool and simply click on the existing dashed line that I made on my sleeve. The eyedropper tool basically converts any highlighted line 
into whatever it touches. I now have one dashed or stitch line ready at the hem. I'm going to copy paste this line one more time to complete my double needle stitch at the hem. Now for the neckline, let's make it a self fabric neck. I'm drawing a curved line first, like so. Then let's create a stitch line right above this curved line because that is how a self neckline is finished. So let's copy paste it and move it upwards using the up arrow key. Manipulate it a bit with the selection tool if the edges are not sitting exactly where you want. Then using the eyedropper tool once again, I'm converting this to a dashed or stitch line by just touching the stitch line on my sleeve. Then let's draw the back neck band. Send it to the back by right clicking the shape and going to arrange and send to back. Let's also add the stitch line on that as well so that it is properly finished too. I'm drawing one last shape which will form the back of the garment. Send that to the back as well. Now all the parts of the dress that form the back, I'm going to color them a light gray. So that includes the piece we drew for the back, the back neck band, as well as the back of the sleeve which I am now drawing in. Next for a more realistic look, I'm using my pen tool to draw in the folds in the fabric. Here's another tip. When you draw a line using your pen tool and you are done and ready to start the next line, you can just hit escape. That will end your line right there and you can start drawing a new line. I'm not going to draw too many lines since these are just basic sketches, but for these two lines, I'm going to my variable width profile on top and changing it to width profile 4. This will ensure that the lines get a tapered look, thicker on top and thinner towards the bottom. Then copy and paste it onto the other side. The final move for garment number one is to give the garment a thick black border all around. This is the step that gives your CAD a professional touch. Also, remember the next few steps because I'm going to be skipping the details for the next few garments. First, copy and paste your garment to the right. Then, remove any stitch lines and details until you are left with just a bunch of shapes. Then highlight everything, go to Pathfinder, click Unite. Next, go to Stroke and increase it to 0.125 inches. Now place your border over the dress, then right click it, go to Arrange and Send to Back. Garment number one is now complete. So guys, it is pretty much the same steps for the remaining garments, so I will go a little faster with those. Garment number two is going to be a shirt. Let's go back to the body form that we drew and start with drawing the right half beginning with the pen tool. I'm going to make the shirt a slim fit one. You know, a little sexy type. Once the main body is done, I am going to the collar. And next, I'm drawing the sleeves followed by the cuff. Copy, paste, reflect onto the left side. Now let's group it all and move it to the adjacent artboard so that we can work on it more. Hit D to default it to the white fill and black outline. Then choose the left and the right halves and unite them with the Pathfinder tool. Let's now zoom in and draw the details of the collar. And next, the front placket. For the back of the shirt, I am simply drawing a piece like this and moving that to the back. So since this is a shirt, we will need to create buttons and buttonholes. The buttonhole is going to look like this while the button is going to look like that. We will put them together and add them onto the shirt. Let's first start with the buttonhole, which is actually just a rectangle of zigzag lines. I'm starting by selecting the rectangle tool and drawing a long rectangle like so. Within it, with my pen tool, holding down the shift key, 
I'm drawing a zigzag line, making sure that the end of each zigzag touches the rectangle's upper and lower sides. This will give me a uniform and even spaced zigzag line. Then delete the rectangle and squash together the zigzag line until it looks like the letter M. Increase the stroke to make it thicker and in the stroke panel, change the cap and the corner to round. This will remove any sharp protruding edges in a zigzag line. Then go to object and expand. With fill and stroke highlighted, hit OK. Doing this will convert the zigzag line from a line to a shape. The benefit of this is, if you reduce the size, the thickness or the stroke of the line will reduce proportionately. But if we don't expand it and leave it as a line, the stroke of the line will remain the same even when we reduce the size, causing complications naturally. Next, with my rectangle tool, I'm drawing a rectangle in such a way that it starts at the center of the left end of my letter M and ends at the center of the right end of my letter M. It also, at the same time, perfectly fits the zigzag line at the top. This is because we are making a zigzag line pattern and it is only the area within the rectangle that we want as a repeat. Now remove the rectangle's fill Right click on it, arrange, send to back. Then highlight both the rectangle and the letter. Come up here to the brush definition panel and click the plus icon. Choose pattern brush and hit OK. You now have created a pattern brush out of your zigzag line. Let's test it out. Draw a straight line first and then click on the pattern brush you just created. And here you have a full line of zigzags. So what do we do with this? We convert it into a buttonhole. For this, draw a long rectangle like this. Click on your pattern brush. Reduce the size to about 0.002. And here is your buttonhole. Once again, I'm going to expand it. Now let's do the buttons. Click on the ellipse tool and draw a circle while holding down shift to get a perfectly round circle. I'm going to copy and paste a second circle with command C and command shift V, reducing the size of the second circle by a bit. Then coming up here to my align section, I'm choosing horizontal align center and vertical align center so that my smaller circle adjusts to end up sitting perfectly within my bigger one. I'm then drawing tiny circles within for the holes on my buttons. Next, with my rounded rectangle tool, I'm drawing a shape connecting the upper two circles. So this now looks like thread. Copy and paste that shape to the lower circles as well. And your button is ready. I'm going to group together the entire button and expand it and then place it on my buttonhole like this. Now let's place both on the shirt and see what it looks like. At the very top at the center, we also need a button horizontally placed. And apart from that, on my placket, I'm copying and pasting more buttons. To ensure that they are all equally spaced from each other within my placket, I'm coming up here to the Align section and clicking Vertical Distribute Center. Now all my buttons have an equal spacing between them. Next, let's carry on with the remainder of the shirt sketch. I'm adding the back of the garment at the sleeve cuffs. I'm then moving to drawing my stitch lines at the collar, once again using the eyedropper tool to convert my line into a dashed one. Now for the placket. Shorten the left line of the placket by a bit. Because in a women's shirt, the buttons are on the left side of the shirt. So this will help make that distinction. I'm drawing in a tiny stitch line here as well and just moving the button up by a bit so that it doesn't clash with the stitch line. Next, I'm drawing the stitch lines at the placket. For the stitch lines at the hem, which is going to be a single needle stitch this time, I am using the same technique that I used for the dress. But 
to make things a little less complicated as there are many more shapes involved in this shirt compared to the dress i am right clicking on the body and selecting isolate selected path this will give me just the body to work on without the rest of the shirt getting in the way now i can follow my usual technique to create a stitch line i'm using my direct selection tool to highlight the line that i drew at the hem along with its anchor points then hitting command c to create a copy i am then double clicking on the background because i no longer need this shape isolated and then hitting command shift v to paste the curved line it has pasted but with the white fill which is okay i'm going to move it up with my arrow key and then with my eye dropper tool i'm clicking an existing stitch line and that's it my curved stitch line has now appeared at the hem i'm repeating the exact same steps for the hem of the shirt panel at the back except this time there needs to be two lines one stitch line like usual and one more line above which is not dashed because that is going to be the fold line aka the hem of the shirt which will be self folded inside so this is how you show it highlight them all right click arrange send to back also draw stitch lines at the cuff then highlight the inner areas and color them gray Let's now create the outer dark black border in the same way I did for the dress. Make a copy, remove any stitch lines or button holes or detailing until only the key shapes are left. Then unite them in the Pathfinder tool. Increase the stroke to 0.125 inches and move the border to the back of the garment. Then for the final step, we are going to draw the lines and folds of the garment with our pen tool. and once done change the variable width of each line to either width profile 1 or width profile 4 as needed same as we did previously for our dress garment number 2 is now ready for garment number 3 we are drawing a basic hoodie let's go back to our body form again and start with the right half as usual then draw in the sleeves the cuff and the waistband reflect the whole thing onto the left and it should look like this let's group it all together and move it to the artboard on the right step number 1 like always is to hit d on your keyboard to default it to a white fill and a black outline let's zoom into the neck and start drawing the hoodie shape in this manner copy paste reflect I'm also drawing in shapes for the inside of the hoodie. This one is the inner neck band. This one is the inside of the hood and last this is the inside of the body. Send all these shapes to the back. Let's now draw the back of the sleeve cuff and also add kangaroo pockets at the front. Next I'm going to add in a zipper that all the front open hoodies have running vertically at the center front. And remember the pattern of zigzag lines that we created that time? In the same way, we're going to make a pattern for our zipper. For this, with my pen tool, I'm drawing out a shape that looks like this. This is just the left half. So create a copy and reflect it to the right. Fill it with black and unite both halves in the Pathfinder tool. Next, create a second copy of this shape by hitting Command C and Command Shift V. Move the copy to the right while holding down Shift. Now create a third copy, except invert it by bringing your cursor to the top right corner of the shape till you get a symbol like this. Then simply click and drag your mouse down while holding down shift till the shape inverts. 
then place the shape like so. Now we're starting to see what the teeth of the zipper is gonna look like. I'm drawing a longer rectangle at the base like so and adding one similarly at the top as well. Also, I'm just gonna reduce the size of this whole thing and zoom in to work on it because otherwise I'm gonna get a really huge size zipper. The next step is to select the rectangle tool, remove any fill and stroke that it might have and draw a rectangle like this. One that falls at the center of each of the bottom two shapes and at the same time falls just outside the border at the top and bottom. The area that falls within this rectangle is the area that will become my repeat to form the zipper pattern. I'm going to right click this rectangle, go to arrange and send to back. Then highlight everything and we're going to create a pattern brush in the same way that we did the zigzag lines previously. Open up the brush definition panel, click on the plus icon, select pattern brush and hit OK. Let's test it out by drawing a straight line and converting it to the zipper artwork we just made. And yup, the zipper teeth look perfect. Let's go add this to the center front of our hoodie. But first, let's merge the right and the left halves with the Pathfinder tool. Do the same for the waistband. Then draw a straight line holding down shift to get it perfectly straight. Go to the brush definition panel and select the zipper artwork. We also need to reduce the size. So up here, change the weight to 0.002 inches. And that is what the zipper should look like. Now we also need to create the zipper head and the zipper puller. So let's start with the puller first. Using my rounded rectangle tool, I'm drawing a shape. I want the corners to be a bit more rounded though. For this, you see these tiny dots appearing at each of the four corners? I'm going to click any one and drag it towards the center of the shape like this. And this looks okay to me. I'm then clicking my ellipse tool and adding circles at the top and the bottom. Next, for the zipper head, I'm drawing a shape like this. Copy, paste, reflect and merge the right half as well. This hexagon will form the zipper head. Place it below your zipper puller. Now highlight your zipper puller go to Pathfinder and click Exclude. This will delete the circle areas in your zipper puller. Then with your rectangle tool, draw a rectangle above to complete the zipper head. I'm gonna color them a few shades of metallic gray before I add them to my hoodie. I'm also grouping them and expanding them. Now on adding it here at the top of my zip, I want the puller to stand out a bit more. So I'm going to tilt it a bit like this and that looks so much better. Now at the bottom of the zipper, simply draw two rectangles like this and your zipper artwork is now done. Let's go ahead and add any stitch lines that the hoodie needs. First, one on either side of the zipper. Then on the kangaroo pocket, And then let's go to the hood. Also color in gray all the areas that represent the inner back of the hoodie. Let's now create the black border in the same way that we did garment number one. Now most hoodies have a ribbed cuff and a ribbed waistband. So I'm going to show you how to create that ribbed texture. Using my rectangle tool, I'm first drawing a long rectangle. I'm then copy pasting the same by hitting command C and command shift V. Then extend the width of the copy by dragging it out to the right. Next, remove any stroke or fill that it might have. Then right click the bigger rectangle and send it to the back. Then highlight both. Come up here to the brush definition panel and make a pattern of it in the same way that we did the zigzag lines and the zipper. Let's test it out. Add 
and this is perfect. Now let's go add it to the cuff. First, draw a curved line. Select the rib artwork that you just made from the brush definition panel. Reduce the size by a bit to about 0.08 inches. Then move the rib artwork to the side. Next, copy and paste the shape of your cuff onto this rib artwork. Then highlight both, right click and go to make clipping mask. This will put the rib artwork into the cuff shape that we placed above. Now place the rib artwork back over the cuff. Copy paste, reflect onto the other side. I am also drawing the rib at the waistband, but this time without the need to clip mask it because the rib shape is perfectly fitting into the waistband border already. I'm then going ahead with my pen tool and drawing the folds and the lines of the fabric as usual changing the variable width profile to either 1 or 4. And finally, this is what your hoodie should look like. And that's it for part 1 of the video guys. I hope it was useful. In part 2, we continue on with drawing a basic jacket, a basic pair of jeans, a basic jogger and a basic cardigan. All using the same template. So stay tuned for that.